from Paramount Pictures. It's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This is something that comes up from time to time, and it's something we've referred to on the air, but I want to talk about it this hour (laughs) because I'm not going to deny that I've been one of these people, and I know you are probably one of these people, too. I bet you are. So there you are. Let me describe the scenario, okay? There you are. You're in love. You're with somebody that you think could be the one. (laughs) There you are, you idiot. There you are. Oh, 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 this is going to be the one. I can see myself spending at least three, four years with this person. This is the one. And so what happens? You move in with them, or maybe you even marry them. You date them for a long time. And uh, you start to blow off your friends. Then you have those people you were dating casually. You don't even call them to tell them. You just kind of cut them out. You just carve them out of your life. How about all those booty calls who never hear from you again? Every once in a while, you get a text message or a phone. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing tonight? Where are you? And you don't even respond. And they're playing the same game you play, you know, because uh, they, they're sending you a message at the same time they're sending messages to 10 other people. So let's not kid ourselves here. <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> So anyway, there you are in love. So you don't need to talk to the booty calls anymore. You don't need to talk to the uh, <laughs> the uh, ex-girlfriends because you're in love. But here's the dirty little secret about being in love for many people. Let's see if you're one of these people. No matter how much you're telling people you're in love... No matter how much you're telling people this could be the one, no matter how many wedding invitations you send out, somewhere in the deep recesses of your mind, there lies doubt. You don't even admit it to yourself. It's just deep within Somewhere in there, you think, what if this doesn't work out? Somewhere in there, maybe in your deepest, darkest moments, or when you're having a stupid fight about something awful or nothing or whatever, you think to yourself, well, what would I do? Where would I go? Who would be the next victim? And the way you know you're one of these people is if you have the phone numbers and the addresses and the data on the people from the past, any of them, even if it's just one of them. Nowadays, now that people have trios and blackberries and what have you, you keep keep all this data. I have, uh, I found out almost 600 names and phone numbers in my trio. Now, there are business names and phone numbers. There are relatives. There are ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, booty calls, women I merely dated, 
women I was trying to hook up with and she got busy or I got busy. There's even phone numbers of women. If I'm honest with you, I'm going to look at one right now so I can make this as authentic as possible. I'm looking at one right now. And now it seems to say Patricia. But I seem to remember Patricia was really Patricia and Patricia was from Peru. I remember that. And we were going to get together. She was hot, too. I don't know what happened. We talked on the phone. She was even interesting to talk to, which is rare. And something went wrong. I, I, maybe I started, you know, boning somebody else. I don't know. But for whatever reason, we never got around to getting together. And by the way, she, I, I remember this part also. She lives in West Hollywood. That's all I know. Do I delete Patricia's number from my phone? No. It's in there now. Why don't I delete it? I don't even know her last name. Don't know her last name. Never met her. Never boned her. I, that much I do know. But that name is in there. And <laughs> if I'm being totally honest with you, one day... If I'm feeling lonely, I'm going to dial that number and say, it's Tom, remember? I'm going to do it. Not only that, having her name and phone number in my phone means if she decides to call me out of the blue, which she did once and could very well do again, that way when the call comes in, the caller ID won't be blank. I will have her name on the screen. Although I do not know her last name. <laughs> I never got to know her well enough to know her last name. Nope. That's the deal. We never went out. Now, you may have numbers and names like that. That's that's the low end of the interest scale where you never even bothered to, like, hook up with them. Or you got the people you hooked up with once. Or you got the people who are your booty calls. And you got the people you actually thought about dating seriously and then had a change of heart. I've got a phone number in here of a woman. I'm going to be honest again. I have a phone number in here of a woman who I saw within the past year. We had sex 13 times in one day. She was, <laughs> Dean is laughing, she was insatiable. She was absolutely, positively insatiable. She would come to my house, and she'd be on her knees in 30 seconds, and, and, and she wouldn't stop until finally you, you practically had to roll her out the door. Now, her last name I do know, and it's in here. I've got her work number. I've got her home number. I've got her cell phone number. It's all here. And uh, there just came a time when, it, when she was, like, getting a little too sticky. You know what I'm saying? She... <laughs> She was getting to be, like, interested in more than just coming over and getting boned. She actually, like, was starting to take this seriously, and I had to stop that. So I did. But do I delete her name or phone number? No, I don't. It's in there. Now, why do I bring this up? Because there are those of you out there right now who claim to be in love. Maybe you're about to move in with your girlfriend. Maybe you're about to uh, get engaged. Maybe you're about to get married. But I'm talking to you right now. That's right, Buster, you. If you are about to get married and you've got phone numbers like that in your phone, and you won't delete them. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Some of you are very protective of this. For example, I have friends who, when they get into a relationship, they keep these phone numbers. They change all the female names to male names. Jennifer becomes John. Francis becomes Frank. You just change the first names of everybody. Because you're going to keep these names in there come hell or high water. Or there are ways using Microsoft Outlook or Palm software to make certain phone numbers quote unquote private. You can put check a box and they're private. And then if you uh, act, come on, you've never done that? 
you activate the filter in the phone. It filters out all the private numbers. So all you see are the you know phone number of the plumber and the phone number <laughs> for your attorney and the phone number for the insurance company and the phone number for the electric company. And then all the names of all the chicks you've been banging, they all get filtered out. Now, if you're one of these people, you're the one I want to talk to. Because the fact that you keep these numbers means that no matter how much you say you're in love, by the way, this is men or women, no matter how much you say you're in love, the reason you keep these phone numbers is not because these are friends. You're keeping these phone numbers in case you need them again. You are. It indicates you have some semblance of doubt about the situation you're in. I mean, how many of you, seriously, how many of you driving to the, to your wedding had a phone in your pocket that has phone numbers of people you've boned? I'll bet a lot of you. How many of you are sitting out at a romantic dinner <laughs> and there's your phone and when the phone rings, you grab it because you're afraid the other person is going to pick it up and see a name or a phone number that they're not supposed to see? How many of you? Oh, I know you're out there. Because <laughs> I've been that guy. That's, I'm, I'm coming clean. I've been that guy. I have phone. I have some phone numbers I've had in here for 15 years. They've transferred from phone to phone or from computer to computer. They've come with me. They've been part of my data bank for years. I will go so far as to say there's one person here. I'm not sure if she's dead or alive. There's one person here who who had uh, serious medical condition. And I'm not sure she's alive. Do I delete her? I don't call her, no. But do I delete her phone number? No. It's in there. And it uh, doesn't matter if I've been with somebody or not. That number stays in my phone. Never know. One day I might just pick it up and dial. There is a woman who I know. In fact, there's a woman Gary has met. There's a woman I know who, uh, since I knew her, has since uh, gotten into a new relationship. She's got a boyfriend. So she has blocked me on her buddy list on America Online, I guess because she uses the computer when she's home. And she never calls me. But she's still got my number in her phone. And when I call her, when I call her cell phone, um, she knows it's me, and it, because I, I the reason she knows it's me after all this time is because my name pops up on the phone when I call. What is my name and phone number doing in her phone? And I'm telling you what it is. If things do not work out with her boyfriend, she's going to be calling me, and we're going to be back just like we did the last time we got together. By the way, I had her phone number in my phone all through another relationship that I had. When I met her, she had a boyfriend. Then she started seeing me and dropped the boyfriend. Then I started seeing somebody else, but I kept her phone number. Then when I was done, I saw her again. We met at a hotel room in San Francisco and went at it. Now she has a boyfriend, and she d deleted me from her buddy list. But these people continue in your life. It's very strange. Some of them you have longer relationships with than you have with the actual people you marry or you move in with. They stay in there. How many of you are in these kinds of relationships? You're married. You're in love. You tell everybody you're in love. Everybody says you're the perfect couple. But your phone is crawling with information. Or your computer. Right? You get a Blackberry or a Trio or something, and these phone numbers are in there. Maybe you put them in some kind of code. Maybe you filter them out, make them all private. These are the seeds of doubt. I don't care how much you say you're in love. If you save these phone numbers, it's because you, it's like in case of emergency, break glass. That's what these phone numbers are, right? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Listen, I just got one word for most of these guys out here. Birth control. I think that's two words. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. At one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. All right? You're in love, but you still have all those phone numbers. Why? Mike on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going? Doing okay. 
Yeah, no, I actually just got engaged last week. Uh, and I still got a ton of numbers on my phone. So why do you need to be engaged if you have all these phone numbers? <laughs> uh, you know what? I found the right girl, man. She's good to me. Then you don't need those phone numbers. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I've got a good remedy for uh, the clingy ones that do try to call you every once in a while. Uh, my phone has uh, the option to put different people in different lists with different ringtones. Um, so I just uh, list all the ones that I never want to speak to again into uh, one of those lists that has a silent ringer. Yeah, but what happens if uh, your wife sees the phone lighting up? She can say, honey, the phone's ringing. <laughs> you know, she uh, she actually gives me all the privacy I need. She's, she she uh, gives she all the privacy. Why, is she stupid? <laughs> no, no, she's uh, trustworthy. But you're not trustworthy. No, I am trustworthy. Then why do you need those phone numbers? <laughs> so I can ignore the people that call me that I don't want to talk to. But the point is, you could simply, um, can't you block phone numbers? Or can't you get another phone number and tell all you the people you're still going to talk to what your new phone number is? Well, I've had the same phone number for the past 10 years. So Come on, how many to- how many people really need to call you? I, I got a couple of people back east. They call me every once in a while. Great. So you make a phone call. You say, here's my new number. Yeah, that's true. You could do that. It's too much work. That's not why, <laughs> no, that's not why you're keeping the numbers. <laughs> sure it is. And that's why you're giggling because you know I'm right. You know you're keeping them here, get there in case of emergency. Mm, possibly. Not possibly. <laughs> now, do you keep them in there under their real names? Uh, yeah, actually. So what happens when your wife goes scrolling through your phone book one day? What are you going to say? Or your fiance? What are you going to say? Well, you know, she's actually done that before, and she knows pretty much uh, my uh, my storied past. Um, she, God, uh, she isn't she the least life. bit curious? Boy, she must really be in love with you so far. Isn't she the least <laughs> bit curious why those names and numbers are still in there? No. So she not, is not stupid. So she is stupid. No, she's, she's a smart girl. She knows she's... Uh, she knows I'm not going to go anywhere. Well, then, it, but she, but, <laughs> but she's wrong because you, <laughs> you hung up. <laughs> you know he just does. You could hear him giggling the whole time like a schoolgirl. You know he's keeping those phone numbers. Look, if I can be honest with you, you can be honest with me, okay? I've already admitted I kept a host of telephone numbers when I was married. When I was. Um, I was living with somebody. I, I kept phone numbers, and some of those people I could, kept in contact with, or if I didn't keep in contact with them, the minute the relationship ended, I got right on that telephone and started dialing. Now, why can't you just be honest about it? That's why you keep those phone numbers. It's not It's not because you're trying to pretty up your phone book or because, uh, well, in case they call, you want them to go to the silent ring. Uh, come on. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, how are you? Great. Long time for I've been listening for about eleven years now, and uh, you're the best. Thank you. I'm in the of LA, and the situation is: I met this girl. She lived out in Vegas, but prior to that, ten years prior to that, she lived out in Los Angeles. So she moved out to Los Angeles because her job moved her out here, and uh, she had, you know. An ex boyfriend calling her that I wasn't aware of, and uh, and I and I hit her up. I was like, you know, what's going on with this, you know? And uh, she's like, well, you know, I don't know anyone else in a way. I haven't been here in ten years, and I, I just, you know, don't know anyone else. And you know, we're we're friends. We've uh, talked on occasion. We used to go out ten years ago. He's a lot older than me. You know, so I was, you know, I was pissed. I said, you know, well, you know, I'm a like his father. So I said, listen, you either lose it, you either lose this guy's number, or I'm gone. Because there's, there's, there's another girl way in line next. You know, I mean, you guys come, you know, a dime a dozen. And, and it's true. You know, especially here in Los Angeles, you know, it's, you know how it is, Tom. So, yes, I do. Uh, I, and I, then I told her, I said, listen, it's either going to be this way or, or the highway. And she, and she, and she got pissed because she's like, oh, you're trying to put ultimatums on me. You're trying to change who I talk to. And I said, no, I'm not. It's either, you know, this is the way I conduct my life. This is the way I conduct my business. If you, and if you don't want to follow it, you know, you could go find another guy that will. I'm not going to put up with it. And then she, uh, she cleaned out her phone book. 
And, and that was the end of that. Now, do I know if she's still talking to uh, the guy secretly behind my back? You know, you'll never know those kind of things. Well, that's right. And she'll talk to him from the office or she'll send him an email. Uh, you know, you know the email Never. went out. You know the email went out that said, "My boyfriend's a jerk. He won't let me talk to you." But uh, so don't call my phone anymore. But here's my office number. Yeah, and I'll tell you, on Easter, this guy called. Okay, and uh, and his name showed up on the phone. I grabbed his phone. You know, it was buzzing. So I looked. I'm like, "Oh, it's this guy." You know, whatever his name was. I'm not going to say it, but I was just like, you know, he's, you know, why is he calling? She's like, I don't know. And she doesn't want to answer it. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm like, go, go, you know, go ahead and answer it. She's like, no, I don't want to. And then she got I pressured her into it, so she answered it. And she's like, oh, how are you doing? And, oh, you know, everything is great. Oh, uh, you know, Chris wants to, uh, you know, wants to know calling me. Like, she put me on the spot like that. Right, she I, threw you, I, I she threw, you, she threw you under the bus with what she did. Right in front of this guy. Why? Well, I, you know, right. I have no idea. He's. I'm 26. He's like in his late 40s. You know. Right. And you know, she threw me under the bus. You know, and and that almost ended it right there. About. I mean, that led to a big fight, Tom. <laughs> I could just. Yeah. Did you imagine what the other end of the call was like? Hi, honey. How are you? It's Easter. Happy Easter. We haven't talked in so long. What's going on over there? How's how's it going with the new boyfriend, huh? Things still uh, things still okay between you and him? That, that's what the other side sounded like. No, nah, I mean, yeah. I mean, the other guy, I mean, the guy on the other side, you know, the line, he was laughing his ass off, saying this, this you know, this young guy is getting pissed and ha, 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 you know, and whatever else, you know, which I'd probably be doing in his situation, too, you know. Uh, but, you know, Life goes on. I mean, what else can you really do? I already laid the law down on her, and, 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 and she's obeying it. And if she's not, then, you know, next. And, you know, they come uh, lined up out here. And you can knock them down uh, just like I used to. You yeah. Know. I've been with this girl for three years, but prior to that, you know, it was, it was, it was nonstop. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, I, know, I know what you mean. <laughs> here you go, Chris. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, Tom, what's going on? How you doing? Great. Well, Tom, just uh, back on story real quick. I was married for two years. Got married young. I know. Strike one. Got married when I was twenty three years old. But luckily, no kids. So, you know, I hit one out of the park with that one. But I recently got uh, about four months ago. I got caught with the phone. But I had a couple of numbers. I mean, don't get me wrong. I had a, I had some doubt, but, I mean, I had some numbers under different guys' names. Why? I mean, I why think, by the way, let me ask you the question, Mark. You already <laughs> figured out that getting married was a mistake. <laughs> it, don't you think the fact that you needed to keep those phone numbers was a hint that maybe you were not ready to be married to anybody? You know, and you know what, yeah, and I tell every guy right now, you know, if you have any kind of doubt, stop what you're doing. I mean, go Well, the thing is, I don't think people know when they have doubts, but I, I want to give everybody out there a concrete way to tell if you've got doubts about your current relationship. If you have phone numbers in your telephone of anybody that you wouldn't want the other person knowing about, you maybe should not be in a relationship. True, true. Because you kept those numbers in there and you risked your whole relationship, but it was worth it to you. Yeah, you know what? And there were a couple of girls that I really want to hold on to their numbers for good reason because, you know, there was flirting going on. And, you know, I was like, yeah, I got to hold on to her number. And well, that, means, like, that means you're not ready to be in a real relationship. It means you want to let all the scenarios play out first. It's just drama, Tom. I guess that was something I was looking for at the time when I was young. But, you know, growing up now, it's different. And, you know, I got a better job. You know, I'm single now, so it's coming up a lot better. And I can mess around. You know, every guy who's out there, you know, if you have those numbers, you have your fun. Have your fun first. I recommend you guys do get as much tail as you can. Because, you know, when you get older and you get married, like I did at a young age, it's gone. It's just gone. Yep. Kiss it goodbye. That's right. To blow me up, Tom. Okay, baby. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. 
this is Craig on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Craig. It's hey Tom. It's Craig. Yes. Hey, man. That guy Chris that just called in. He's on. A, he's not a one-on-one listener. I guarantee it. Do you hear him? She threw him under the bus, and he's still with her. I know. And you did, why didn't you call him out on that, Tom? Come on. <laughs> this guy's like, anyway, anyway, I'm not here to call about that. But that was just, you know, I had to listen to it, so I'm a little pissed off about it. But um, as far as those numbers in your phone, yeah, you got a number, you want to keep it. I got a number like that for business. I don't want these females calling because I do hit a lot of holes. But I still need them around. That way, I just put no-go. No-go one, no-go two, no-go three. That way, a no-go comes up, I'm not going to answer it because... It's a no-go, right? <laughs> you can use that, Tom. You can use that. No-go. Well, I got about 15 no-goes on my phone, and, you know, I'll get them calling every once in a while three in the morning. Hey, you're no longer going because you're a no-go. So that's what I do. <laughs> now, now, are you married or uh, living with someone or what? No, no way. Hey, I'm, I'm a listener. I told him I'm a follower, you know? I, I'm single as a gift. I hit a lot of hole, and there's a lot of no-goes. I'll be three in the morning, some fat chick, no problem. But she's a no-go right after she leaves my house. <laughs> you, know what I'm, hey, you know what I'm saying, Tom. I want you to use a no-go. It's a, it's a good thing. And that way, if you, do, if you do get a girlfriend, and she can, what are these numbers in your phone? Oh, they're no-goes, honey, you know. They're labeled, you know, accordingly. You know what I'm saying, Tom. You, you, you hit a lot of holes, too. You know, it's good. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. We're talking about the people who keep phone numbers, regardless of whether they are married or living with somebody or in love. Doesn't that tell us you're not as in love as you think you are? Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It was a rule when we got married: never mess around on me, never stop belating me, and never. Get back. Never stop filleting me. Words I can live with. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yeah. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Come on. If you've got those phone numbers in your telephone of the people you've been boning or the people have been boning you, and you keep them in there after you move in with somebody or you get married. These are seeds of doubt. This is a balls-out clue that maybe you should not be in that relationship. Gabby, I'm the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Gabby. How are you? Do you care? I do. I'm doing great. I was just calling. You know, I was one of the ones that would keep my phone numbers. Even if I was dating uh, other guys, it didn't matter, you know. Um, I keep them for the fact that you never know when you need to call somebody up, you know. And there were guys that that I would go out with or that I dated or any anything like that. I would just keep every single number. And um, I didn't delete them until about a week before I got married. So you waited until a week before? I did. Which says to me... That you were not sure about the guy you were marrying until a week before you married him. Well, I wouldn't say I wasn't sure. Well, I, why would you wait? I don't know. I just never got around to it. Da, da, I, da, 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 da. That's a cop out. Come on. <laughs> never got around to it. <laughs> well, you know, it It just, I just, I don't know. I just kind of had the time and I just went through it. And I said, you know, well, I'm not going to need these anymore. So I deleted them. I had an experience with somebody. I uh, I dated somebody from South America. Mm-hmm. I won't say which country because I have ex-girlfriends always threatening to sue me for talking yeah. about them on the radio. So let's just say a country in South America, way south in South America, okay? And about 7,000 miles away from where we live, okay? And uh, when she came here and she ultimately moved in with me, Uh, One day, uh, I I walked into the room, and she was uh, online chatting with somebody. And it turns out it was her ex-boyfriend, the Formula One racer. Mm -hmm. They're chatting online. This is the guy who dumped her and married somebody else. They're chatting online. that's not good. Right, but no, no. Here's where it gets really good. He asks her for her cell phone number. Not okay. not her home number, not my landline, 
He wanted her cell phone number. Okay. And she's about to give it to him. Oh, my gosh. This is the cell phone, by the way, that I got for her. Oh, wow. And I well, said, I know. said, if you give him that, if you give him that phone number, give me the phone back and get out. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that makes sense. It does. I mean, really come does. on, come on. What is that? Give me your cell phone number. <laughs> that, that, that I'm not stupid. Sense. I know why guys do that. Well, yeah, it's a given. It's a given. I mean, if you have those numbers and you know, I mean, if I was to go into my husband's phone right now and I see numbers from a long time ago, which he doesn't, um, right. of course, I'd be pissed. You know, I mean, there's I mean, no need for that. And the reason she wanted to exchange numbers with him and keep in touch with him is because even though she was living in my house and eating my groceries, uh, she wanted to make sure that her butt was covered in case things didn't work out with me. Yep. And that's, that's true. That's that's exactly why um, I kept my phone numbers. I mean, I didn't mean to keep them for so long. But um, when even when I was dating other guys, and I had, you know, guys' numbers already in my phone, um, they would always comment, and, and, and why would I have these numbers? But I say, well, why not? The, this is my phone. We're not, we're not married, so it shouldn't matter. Now, let me ask you a question. How long after you met the guy who's now your husband? Uh, how long after that did you continue talking to these guys? Um, at the beginning, I did because we we dated for probably about I'd say two and a half years. Right. Probably for the first year, I kept them. Um, I would talk to them, you know. But um, it, after that, like it kind of just we just started, you know, it, the calls just stopped. You know, you don't keep in touch with people, and you know they're not going to call you out of just out of nowhere, but. You never know. I, 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 I never really had any any problems with that. Right. And um, let me ask you another question. Do you have the same phone with the same phone number? No, no. I totally changed my number. Oh, you changed your number too. See. Yeah. All right. So you know what? But you see, you've convinced me that about you don't what? have a shred of doubt about your husband, your relationship with your husband. You're in. But the people who keep, even the people who keep the same phone number. Much less the ones who keep the phone numbers of all the other people or start yeah. putting them in code. Those people really don't have any confidence in their relationship. Oh, no. And, I mean, just how you said, and you, you've had numbers, you said, for, what, 14 years? And yes. you still have them. Yes, I, mean, I do. And, and, I mean, I, you know, you never know. I mean, look at how your, your relationships were. You were married, you said, I think, three or four times? Four times. Four times, and I mean, you still you kept them in, and I mean, look at you now. You're single, and you still got your numbers. <laughs> I still, by the way, the, there are women I talk to now who have known me longer than anybody who was ever married to me. Yeah, that's that's that, that's the. I don't know. I guess in some certain situations, it's okay to have them, but I mean, if you're getting closer and you're you're with somebody for a long time and you know and you don't have any doubts, then I would say, yeah, just get rid of them. There's no need for that. Gabby, thank you for the call. I appreciate it. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Ronnie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey Tom, what's going on? Not much, Ronnie. Hey, Tom, real simple. I'm 23 years old. I married a 27 year old woman. She's a flight attendant. Strike one. Um, I have my my numbers on my phone. I don't have them inputted into my phone. They are in a little piece of paper that's behind the battery pack of my cell phone because she's gone through my phone before and called people such as Frank when it's really Francis and a girl answered and I had to give her explanations. Uh, the reason I do it is because she's gone three to four days out of the week due to her job. And, you know, a guy's got his needs. A guy's got to do what a guy's got to do. Why did you get married? Uh, I have a baby with her, and it's just cheaper to keep her, Tom. I own no, a business, but it's, but it's not. Wait, you're wrong. That that That's a very catchy phrase, but it's factually incorrect. It's cheaper to pay child support. Uh, even, I mean, I, I, be, I would believe that if you're working for a company, I'm self-employed. I own my own plumbing business, and uh, I make... Yeah, but now when you marry her, then when you divorce her, she owns half of your business. Uh, that's why I decided to stay with her. But if you hadn't married her, she wouldn't own any of your business. Right, but I had to marry her because she no. had my daughter, and 
you know, well, you did not have. To, I didn't want to lose you my did not I didn't have to marry her. The money. But but the point is, you would not have lost. All you would have paid is child support. No alimony, no community property. Yeah, I mean, I guess I was dumb. I didn't. I didn't yes, you that. were dumb. Uh, by the way, uh, do you have any idea what the reputation of flight attendants is in the Fidelity area? Uh, what was that again? <laughs> do you have any idea of the reputation of flight attendants when it comes to marital or relationship fidelity? Uh, no, I don't. How many of them get nailed by pilots? They're in strange hotel rooms all the time. I knew at least one flight attendant who had a guy in every city to which her airline flew. Well, I, I believe that, Tom, but I mean, I, I, I'm doing the same thing at home. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not with her because I love her. So you married somebody you don't love because oh. you were stupid and you believed that it would save you money? Of course, Tom. Who doesn't? 50% of the California marriages are divorced. What is that? Yeah, but why, why, why join the parade? You, you were crazy to do that. I'm the statistic. Yeah, but you didn't have to become one. Well, I you mean, were too cheap. You were too happen. cheap. You were too cheap to consult an attorney. And now, if you get divorced, she's going to be your partner in the plumbing business forever. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't plan on divorcing her. And you're going to be paying her expenses. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I would pay alimony. I know I would pay a big lump sum for child support. Uh, she makes a pretty good penny herself, so. It doesn't mean you wouldn't have to pay. Uh, if I do, it'd probably be very minimal. I mean, I wouldn't know. I haven't consulted an attorney, but, uh, you know, I know it'd be... All she'd have to do is stop working and say, I want to stay home with the kid. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Her career, though, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't think she would do something like that. And by the way, why are you worried about her finding these numbers? Uh... <laughs> There goes the divorce papers. There goes half the plumbing business. <laughs> you know, these are women that I've met, uh, that I've known since high school. Uh, you know, I've, I've cheated on her ever since we were dating. It's just, it's always been a part of me. Unbelievable. Yeah, it sure is, Tom. So that's beyond, uh, that's beyond using the numbers because you don't have confidence in your marriage. You actually uh, got married for the wrong reasons. Of course. And uh, now you cheat on her and you had the phone numbers. <laughs> but it, it hasn't been since I've been married or that I've been cheating on her. I mean, it's it's been, a, you know, ever since we've been dating, I've, I've seen other women, other ex-girlfriends. I have girls that I call that are married. And uh, So you know, you're, you're still getting laid on the side. Of course. And you hide the phone numbers on a piece of paper. Right behind the battery of my cell phone. Unbelievable. Hey, Tom, can you take now Kobe style? Of course I, I can. Show, by the way, thank you very much. Thank you, Ronnie. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Lisa. Uh, well, let me tell you, I don't really agree with the stuff that you said, but this one made me crack up. I am married, okay, and I do hide my phone numbers from guys. I haven't cheated, but I still keep them. What for? For a rainy night. But, dear, that means you have no confidence in your marriage. I do not anymore. But, but not the anymore. point is, there was, well, when you say anymore. But you had the numbers. Anymore. But you had the numbers when you were confident, supposedly. Hey, you never get you never get rid of the you know. You were never stuff. confident. You were never confident. You were lying to yourself about that relationship. Yeah, I was because I didn't believe guys. Because listening to your radio station and the previous relationships that I had made me have no comments. So basically, right now I'm well taken care of. I do not want to get separated because obviously... I'm so you just keep the phone number secret. Unbelievable. The Tom Likas Show.